Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today, we're comparing AMD's best value previous generation high-end GPU, the Radeon RX 6800 XT, to the newer 7900 XT, which wasn't as good value, but now the unofficial official discounted price of $800 US, it's kind of good value, I suppose. Anyway, I want to see how they compare in a truly massive sample of games, so that is the goal of today's video. But before we get into it, Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Hetzner, a reliable hosting partner with a passion for IT. Hetzner runs their own high-tech data centers in Helsinki, Finland, as well as German cities Nuremberg and Falkenstein. By merging its capabilities in cutting-edge technology, attractive pricing, and skilled customer service, Hetzner has also increased its market share both inside and outside of Europe. As one of the leading hosting providers, Hetzner is still innovating when it comes to new products, offering a variety of services. Outstanding self-developed, high-tech dedicated servers such as their recent launch of the EX44 featuring Intel's Core i5-13500 and EX101 using Intel's Core i9-13900. So for affordable approaches to modernizing your IT infrastructure, please check the link in the video description. Okay, so firstly, you might be wondering why the 6800 XT and not the 6900 XT or 6950 XT. Well, basically, the 6800 XT was the last sensible Radeon GPU, in my opinion, much like how the RTX 3080 10GB was the last sensible GeForce GPU, at least based on the MSRP. Typically, you could expect to pay around 50% more for the 6900 XT, and it was only around 10% faster than the 6800 XT. Today, though, the 6900 XT, it's all sold out, Dunzo, leaving the 6800 XT at around $570 US, while the 6950 XT can be had for $680, and that makes the 6950 XT around 20% more expensive while delivering around 20% more performance. So really, I could have used either the 6800 XT or 6950 XT for this comparison, but again, I went with the 6800 XT as it was, in my opinion, a more sensible product at the MSRP. It was also available for a longer period of time, so coupled with the fact that it was generally more affordable, I believe considerably more 6800 XTs would have been sold to gamers. In any case, there's really no right or wrong comparison to be made here. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's talk about the matchup. The 6800 XT was released back in November of 2020 at an MSRP of $650 US, but due to the cryptocurrency boom at the time, Getting any graphics card at or near the MSRP was mission impossible. What this means though is at the MSRP, the 7900 XT is 38% more expensive. But also, the 7900 XT does appear to have a fake MSRP, and not a GeForce fake MSRP where it always costs more than the suggested price, but rather fake in the sense that the manufacturer's suggested price was actually too high. And let's be honest, the 7800 XT was always a bad joke at $900 US. $800 is certainly a more acceptable price, and at that price, it's 23% more expensive than the 6800 XT's MSRP, while at current retail pricing, it's around 40% more costly. Now, based on the data from a poll from three years ago, we know that the vast majority of you would like to see at least a 50% performance uplift before you'll even consider upgrading your GPU. And presumably this is at the same price point that you originally purchased at. So if you did buy a 6800 XT at the MSRP, that means the 7900 XT is already just over 20% more expensive, meaning ideally you would need at least 60% more performance, if not 70 to 80% more for 6800 XT owners to pull the trigger on the upgrade. And that's a problem for AMD, as we're about to discover. For testing, the CPU used is the Ryzen 9 7950X 3D, but with the second CCD disabled, as this has been done to ensure maximum performance in all games. So essentially we're testing with the yet to be released 7800X 3D. And this CPU has been tested on the Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master using 32 gigabytes of DDR5 6000 CL30 memory. As usual, we'll go over the data for around a dozen of the games tested before jumping into the big breakdown graphs and the resolutions of interest here are 1440p and 4K, so let's get into it. So let's start by looking at the Cyberpunk 2077 data using the high quality preset with upscaling disabled. Here the 7900 XT is 33% faster than the 6800 XT at 1440p and 44% faster at 4K, so in this example RDNA 3 is scaling much better than RDNA 2 as the resolution increases. 
4K performance was a weakness of AMD's previous generation architecture, so it is good to see this being addressed with RDNA 3. And something else AMD addressed, or at least improved with RDNA 3, was ray tracing performance, though we're not really seeing any evidence of that here in this example. Enabling the RTFX with the aid of FSR upscaling, the 7900XT was 36% faster at 1440p and 43% faster at 4K, so basically the same margins seen without RT enabled. Dying Light 2 using the high quality preset, which enables DirectX 11, provides us with what should be fairly typical results. The 7900XT was 32% faster at 1440p and 31% faster at 4K, so not a huge win for the newer Radeon GPU here, but again, this is typically what I'd expect to see, especially with ray tracing disabled. Speaking of which, enabling the high quality ray tracing preset, which requires DirectX 12, we see that the 7900XT is now 46% faster at 1440p and 44% faster at 4K. So the newer RDNA 3 architecture is scaling better here, but performance overall isn't exactly amazing with just 67 FPS at 1440p, but that's certainly much more enjoyable than 46 FPS. So in that sense, the 7900XT is much more usable for those hoping to enable the RTFX. Surprisingly, the 7900XT is much faster in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, pumping out an impressive 174 FPS at 1440p to make it almost 50% faster than the 6800XT. The margin remained the same at 4K, where the 1% lows of the 7900XT matched the average frame rate of the 6800XT, so a big win here for the newer Radeon GPU. The new RDNA 3 GPU also offered big performance gains in a Plague Tale Requiem, with 46% greater frame rates at 1440p and 4K. This is a very strong showing for the new 7900XT, and would be enough to entice most into upgrading, that is assuming if the price was similar, which unfortunately it isn't. Next up we have Warhammer 3, and this one also saw big performance gains for the 7900XT, delivering 45% more frames at 1440p and 47% more at 4K. And that 4K uplift will be especially noticeable as we're going from 44 FPS to a much smoother 65 FPS in that example. The Callisto protocol enables FSR by default with the ultra quality preset, so I've not altered the configuration. Under these conditions, the 7900XT was 41% faster at 1440p and 39% faster at 4K, so a solid performance uplift here, and pretty impressive stuff, of course, if we ignore the cost increase. Atomic Heart is another title that sees an almost 40% increase at both tester resolutions. The 6800XT is certainly more than capable at 1440p with 74 FPS on average, and with some tweaks to the visuals, you could get up to around 100 FPS. The real difference though can be seen for those of you targeting 4K, where the 6800XT fell below 60fps, so again, some tuning of the settings could get you to 60fps without too much of a visual downgrade, but you'd also get closer to 90fps with the 7900XT. Moving over to my favourite, Fortnite, the 7900XT was just 29% faster than the 6800XT at 1440p, which is still a reasonable performance uplift, but it's also much smaller than the say 40% increase we've seen typically at the higher resolutions. And again, it is 4K where you will really notice the difference between these two GPUs. Switching over to DirectX 12 does degrade the performance of both GPUs in Fortnite, and now the 6800XT is good for just 60fps at 1440p, making the 7900XT 34% faster, while it was once again 40% faster at 4K. Then with hardware ray tracing enabled along with upscaling, we don't see that much of a change to the margins. At 1440p, the 7900XT was 33% faster, and then 41% faster at 4K, so very similar to what was seen without ray tracing enabled. Next up we have Hogwarts Legacy, and here the 7900XT is 34% faster at 1440p using the ultra quality preset, and 29% faster at 4K, so fairly mild gains compared to what we've seen so far. Having said that though, enabling ray tracing blows out the 1440p margin to 48%, though oddly we're still seeing a 29% margin at 4K, though performance for both GPUs is roughly halved when compared to what we saw at 1440p. Moving on to Halo Infinite, we're looking at a 24% margin at 1440p, so certainly one of the smaller margins we've seen so far, and then 32% at 4K, though both did deliver highly playable performance but you could certainly argue that the 7900XT enabled a better high refresh rate experience at the 4K resolution. Forza Horizon 5 is one of the titles where RDNA 3 performs the worst relative to RDNA 2, 
and we're certainly seeing a clear example of this here. At 1440p, the 7900 XT was just 8% faster than the 6800 XT, and then 18% faster at 4K. So as we've seen already, scaling is better at the 4K resolution, but performance overall is weak in this title. And another weak title for RDNA 3 is Death Stranding. Here the 7900 XT is just 5% faster than the 6800 XT at 1440p, which you could claim looks like CPU limited data, and while the 4K results certainly back that claim up, the 7900 XT is still only 25% faster, and that's certainly a big improvement over 5%, but well below what you'd typically expect to see. And the second last game we're going to look at the individual results for is War Thunder, and here we're entirely CPU limited using the highest in-game quality settings. So not much to glean from these results, other than to say that for those of you primarily playing less visually demanding titles such as War Thunder, upgrading from a 6800 XT is going to be a waste of time and money. Last up, we have Counter-Strike Global Offensive, and the results here are similar to those just seen in War Thunder, in the sense that the game is heavily CPU limited, especially at 1440p in this example. At 4K, the 7900 XT was slightly faster, though we're only talking about a 9% improvement. So again, the results here are heavily CPU limited, but I know a lot of you are interested in CSGO data, so there you have it. Okay, so we've now had a look at 14 of the 50 games tested, some with and without RT enabled. So now it's time to see how these two GPUs compare across all of the games that I've tested. So let's go do that, starting with the 1440p data. Here we're seeing that on average, the 7900 XT was just 32% faster than the 6800 XT, which is a pretty mild performance increase, especially given that at the MSRP, the newer RDNA 3 GPU costs 38% more, 40% more based on current retail pricing. We did see performance gains as high as 59%, with over 40% gains in 16 of the games tested. That said, there were 19 examples where performance ranged from 20 to 30%, which of course led to our 32% margin overall. Now jumping up to 4K didn't really change the overall result much. Here the 7900 XT was 35% faster on average, though we did see numerous examples where that extra 20 to 40% resulted in much smoother performance at 4K. So for those of you hoping to game at 4K, the 7900 XT is a more impressive upgrade over the 6800 XT, than the 35% result would lead you to believe. But sadly, given the difference in price, that doesn't really change the fact that in terms of value, the 7900 XT is still pretty underwhelming, even at $800 US. Now out of interest, I went back and removed any game or result with ray tracing enabled, and then recalculated the averages. And this reduced the 7900 XT's lead over the 6800 XT at 1440p to 30% though that is just a 2% difference compared to the data seen previously when combining all of the results. And it's a similar story at 4K. We're looking at a mere 2% change, and that's down from 35% faster for the 7900 XT to 33% faster. So what about just looking at the ray tracing enabled titles? Well, at 1440p, the 7900 XT was on average 39% faster across the 16 titles tested, so that's increased by 7% when compared to the combined results. It's certainly not a massive change, but it is clear that for the most part, RDNA 3 does handle ray tracing a bit better than RDNA 2. And we're looking at the same 39% improvement on average at 4K for the 7900 XT over the 6800 XT. So there you have it. Across a wide range of games without ray tracing enabled, the 7900 XT is just 30% faster than the 6800 XT, and then closer to 40% with ray tracing enabled. So those are some pretty decent gains, but again, the performance uplift isn't necessarily the concern here, rather it's the price creep. As I've noted several times already, you're now faced with having to spend 40% more on the 7900 XT over the 6800 XT. If the 6800 XT was still selling at $650 US of the MSRP, then the 7900 XT would be a bit more exciting at $800, as you'd be paying a little over 20% more for what typically amounts to a little over 30% more performance, and while that's certainly not an amazing generational improvement, it is still an improvement. As it stands right now though, the 6800 XT and 7900 XT, they really could be from the same product family. Sure, the 7900 XT is more power efficient, but with both GPUs consuming a similar level of power, gamers are hardly going to care. I'd certainly pay the premium for the 7900 XT over the 6800 XT if I was interested in stuff like ray tracing, but then if that were the case, you would generally just be much better off with a GeForce GPU, like the RTX 4070 Ti, for example. 
So in my opinion, it's not really a situation where you'd be tossing up between these two products. If you've got $800 to spend on a GPU and you want the best performance possible, the 7900 XT becomes the obvious choice. But if your budget is $600 and you're not willing to stretch it to $800, then you buy what you can afford. And right now, nothing beats the 6800 XT at $570. In fact, the current GeForce alternative would be the 8GB RTX 3070 Ti, which can be had for $600, but the 6800 XT is on average roughly 20% faster with twice the VRAM, so it is quite clearly the better buy in my opinion. As for 6800 XT owners looking at upgrading, that's not really on the cards either. If there were an RDNA 3 based product that was able to offer 30-40% to more performance than the 6800 XT at the same price, or even the same MSRP, then based on the polling data, that would only be just enough of an uplift to entice around 30% of you to upgrade. Again, the vast majority of you are after a 50% improvement or greater, so hopefully AMD and Nvidia's next generation of GPUs will offer a lot more. Actually, I went back and updated our poll from 2019, asking the exact same question, but in 2023. And now 50% of you would only upgrade for a 60% or larger performance uplift, which makes sense. Graphics cards are now more expensive than ever. So if you're going to spend more than ever, you want to get more. And that's not great news for AMD and NVIDIA. And as an example, the 7900 XT, it would be on average around twice as fast as the 5700 XT, but it also costs twice as much. So pretty poor progress over a four year period. And that is going to do it for this big benchmark comparison. If you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. You can subscribe for more content because I will have more of these big 50 game benchmarks coming up on the channel. I'll also get into some CPU testing soon and we have some other interesting content coming up. So yeah, make sure you subscribe for all of that. Also, if you'd like to become a Harbour Unbox community member, you can subscribe to our Floatplane or Patreon accounts. Either will give you access to our exclusive Discord server for members only, monthly live stream to myself, get together and do that. We have some behind the scenes content, and we do Q&A stuff. So check it out if you're interested, but if not, that is perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.